You know what I think of? This is heavy. So you have no idea who I am, why you're here, but you care about the 10 games I can't live without. Of course you do. Hey, I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude. This is Board Games for One. Let's get right to it. 10 games I can't live without in my collection. Let's go. Should be noted, first of all, these games are in no particular order and they might change in the future, right? Nothing about this is permanent. Let's go. If you've been following my live streams, I've been playing Nemesis Lockdown. I need a game that takes me through that like thrilling roller coaster ride experience. Whether I win or lose, I wanna win. This gives me that survival experience. Nemesis Lockdown is part of the Nemesis series. I'll put all the details up here. It is expensive, it is available retail. This is over $100. It's a big game, it's a table hog, takes up all kinds of space, like multiplayer, it has the trader mechanic, it's a semi-cooperative game. So you are a crew of people in Nemesis Lockdown, you're in an underground facility on Mars, I believe. Mars seems to be a theme for me, don't know why. But anyway, you're trying to survive. You as players can choose to play a cooperative game where you are all working together to complete missions to survive, or you can play the original, which is semi-cooperative, where you are all working on your own. You may end up helping each other, but you have hidden objectives that may or may not align with each other. Your objective may be to make sure that the other character doesn't make it out alive. You never know. Solo is its own mode. It's basically cooperative, but with only one character. You only have to manage one hand. Love it, check it out. Next. You know what I think of when I think of scary space game that takes me straight to Honey Buzz. No, not at all, oh my goodness. I wanted more of like a medium Euro, and I really like cutesy themes. So when I'm talking cutesy though, I'm talking like fairy tale nostalgic, take me back to my childhood in the 80s when I watched David the Gnome and all those other things. What was it? Teddy Ruxpin was a favorite. I had a Teddy Ruxpin doll. He's good for snuggling. Anyway, Honey Buzz. It was a battle between this and Rococo, and believe it or not, Honey Buzz win. I wanna do a playthrough of this because not enough people have seen this game. But anyway, Honey Buzz, I think it runs about $40. I don't know if it's currently available because he did a recent Kickstarter for Fall Flavors. I don't know if that came out yet. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can find it online for you. But if you can find copies, awesome. Please let us know in the comments. Link where to find it. Anyway, about 40 bucks. It's an engine building game worker placement where you are, if you are playing multiplayer, your worker placement and your foraging in a field is really where the player interaction is. It's not a whole lot of player interaction in this game, but there's enough. You're building your own beehive. Each person has their own beehive that they're building to produce honey, so it's also an economy game. Then you are sending that honey to the bear market in order to fill orders, and your goal is to have the most money at the end of the game in order to win. I keep hearing in different reviews that people are like, hey, it's just this other game with the pasted on theme, or the only reason you really like it is because it's cutesy and the deluxe components. And by deluxe components, I mean what comes with the game looks like it's deluxe, $40. This is a beautiful game. Beautiful cutesy artwork. Let's credit them. <laughs> and hide sick, forgive me, um, your art. Wow, I love it, I want more. And our designer, Jason D. Kingsley. I love this game. This is it. So as far as those criticisms go, I can't speak to it. Maybe it is. I haven't played those other games. I don't even remember what they're called, but they said it's like so similar to. I'd probably like them though, because I like this. And you know what? I like art and I like theme. I'm a whole production kind of guy. So whatever. I love it. This isn't a gateway game. Please don't think this is a gateway game just because it looks cute. Oh my goodness. Don't do it. If people are new to gaming, do not start with this. This is a brain-burning little puzzle between figuring out where to place your bee in the big hive in order to command your bees to make certain actions to build your own hive. That includes foraging for pollen or producing honey or producing little certificates to sell stuff. There's all kinds of things to do, and it's too much for new players. So not a gateway game, medium weight game. Let's go to our next. You know what I think of when I think of cute fuzzy bees? That takes me straight to Hostage Negotiator. Yes, that makes all kinds of sense. I wanted a true solo game, as solo gaming is really my first love of gaming. Though I love family games, I love playing with my son, I love playing party games, playing with my sister. It's all, it's all good times, right? But anyway, Hostage Negotiator, this is the Crime Wave box. You can just buy the base game. 
but I like the whole system. The reason I'm holding this up is it has everything in it from Hostage Negotiator to Crime Wave to Career and all the little mini card packs that get expanded to it. This is what Final Girl is based on. You might be wondering why, fi why don't I just have Final Girl? The serial killer thing just bothers me. So I'm looking forward to playing Final Girl's creature features when it comes to like the alien one, things like that. See if, it, see if I'm a little more comfortable with the theme. Still, this is a different game, and this is basically a, is it a deck builder? Sort of. You are building your deck. It's a deck building, dice rolling, luck mitigation game. That's what I would call it. Deck building minimal. Just in that what you have in your hand, you can purchase cards from a card market, and what these cards are is their conversations. So a hostage crisis has happened, and there are different criminals, or not all of them are criminals. It might be a father holding someone hostage to get insurance for his son. There are different criminals that have different demands that need to be met. These are randomly chosen for each of the criminals. The base game comes with three, and then you can purchase little card packs that add more hostage takers, whatever we're gonna call them. I forget what they're called. They're not criminals. Some of them are. But anyway, you can purchase more, and then of course there's bigger expansions like Crime Wave and Career, which turns this into not so much of a legacy game, but a campaign. A nice long campaign game. So you can level up and all that good fun. Anyway, the system is you purchase conversations to try to talk the person down or meet their needs, or if necessary, send a squad in to take them down. Not the best outcome. They can escape. You're trying to save hostages. If all the hostages get killed, you die. Or if enough of them get killed, then, you know, it's a failure. If you save enough of them, then it's a success. Unless that particular demand is special. It goes on and on and on. You do roll dice to determine success. And a lot of people might say that takes away the strategy. The real strategy is learning how to mitigate that by sacrificing your cards. You can sacrifice cards where you put them down instead of using an ability in order to do one big move. That's where the art of the game is. All right, Hostage Negotiator. There we go. Let's go to the next game. I sure hope I haven't been holding these upside down the whole time. You know what I think of when I think of dice rolling luck nightmares on Mars. That's right, a heavy euro with absolutely no luck involved, hardly at all. I want a heavy euro. That is a game that I must have in my collection. Not as many as you'd think, though. When I started gaming, I thought Heavy Euros, absolutely, that's my jam. No, not really. It was a phase. I'll probably go back into a phase again. But I love this one. I love this one from the beginning. I continue to love it. Solo mode in the base game is mildly broken. I still am fine playing just the solo mode of this. They did release an expansion. It's like an extra $65. This is over $100. If you want that expansion, it's got some cooperative and semi-cooperative, I believe. Um, modes in it as well as a solo mode. You don't need it, but do know that if you're buying this for solo, it is somewhat broken. Um, people had issues with it. I don't care. I love it. I've played it at four players. I've played it at three players, I believe, and I've played it, maybe it was two, whatever, and I've played it solo, uh, you know, per plumple number of times, a lot of times. There's a heavy euro where you are building a colony on Mars. It is interactive if you are playing multiplayer because you are all building on the same colony, benefiting from each other or benefiting other people by your actions or you're benefiting from others' actions. So player interaction, pretty high in this one. I really appreciated that. Same with solo. You are interacting with the solo smart AI bot. It's an AI deck that you flip over. I'm not going to go into how to play the game because this is one of the heaviest games out there, it's designed by Vital Acerta, artwork by Ian O'Toole. They're fantastic. I've got other videos on this game. For more details, check them out. Let's go to the next. You know what I think of? I hope you can see through the glare and understand why this is so strange. When I think of heavy euro, I think of throw throw avocado. Yes, that makes all kinds of sense. No, actually it doesn't at all. But you know what I love? A good family party game. This is a game that, um, that Daniel introduced to me actually throw throw avocado you can do throw throw a burrito you can buy both and play secret mode haven't done that yet uh, but look this is just a fun game you set up quickly party game the more people the better who how many players what are we two to six players no solo mode for this game unless you want to throw avocados at yourself actually that sounds fun uh, <laughs> they need to make that like you throw it against the wall like racquetball and try to hit you anyway 
That would be fun. Anyway, what this is is a card game. It's similar to something like spoons, I suppose. Mm, loosely. Anyway, you have a hand of cards. You are passing cards around quickly. So it's like card drafting. You pick up a card, discard a card. The next person picks up that card, discards a card. And you are trying to get matching sets of like three, right? So some of those sets of three is a point. You're trying to get points. Whoever has the most points wins. You can also get sets of three of cards that initiate avocado or burrito battles, like a freeze war, where you immediately, as soon as you lay down those three cards, it's a freeze war. Everybody goes for the avocado, throws it. Whoever gets hit gets frozen. The last person that's not frozen wins that point. It's great fun. Or like a leg war, where you have to stand back to back, walk away, turn around, throw the, you know, object between your legs and hit the other person. Whoever gets hit first wins. If you catch it, you also win the point. There's more. It's stupid fun, but it's so much fun. I loved, I, this is the one that my son introduced. I loved it. Um, I just can't play this enough. Next. You know what I think of when I think of lighthearted throwing avocados at people's faces. Something light like either fields. Not at all. I wanted a good campaign in my collection of the 10 games that I just can't live without. And right now, Either Fields is that game. This went out over Lord of the Rings, Journeys to Middle Earth. No, that's not fantastic. Now, ISS Vanguard might beat this game out. I don't know yet. Right now, it's Either Fields by Awaken Realms, designed by people that aren't on the box. So it's going to be on the screen, just like I always do. This is another... You know what's not in this collection? A lot of very affordable games, and I'm sorry for that. You've been seeing the prices. Some of them are Hostage Negotiator, Base Game 35, Honey Buzz, you know, somewhere around 40, 45. Throw, throw, uh, avocado, about 25. The rest of them are like pumping over $100 or close to it. I'm sorry for that. I guess that's what I can't live without. I don't know. Any, you know what else isn't in here? Many gateway games. I wouldn't call throw, throw, avocado a gateway game. That's a party game. Whatever, we can have that conversation. Anyway, and I love gateway games. I guess I can live without them. Either Fields is a dreamscape game. You can see a couple of my live playthroughs in order to see whether it's for you as well as my review on the channel here. But anyway, you're entering a dream with characters, wandering around, trying to solve mysteries. It is a deck builder to a degree, but once you collect enough cards, it's about halfway through the game, it seems, the deck building kind of comes to a stall, which is fine. Then it's just deciding what kind of a hand do you want for each dream as you can choose to rebuild your hand with a different character you play like five different dreamers four different dreamers i don't remember and they all have asymmetrical abilities there's also the thorn king something like that mode that you can play for certain rounds like going into superpower mode and each the rest is a spoiler watch the live playthrough decide if it's for you it's a beautiful wandering. If you're looking for combat, if you if you like Marvel Champions, if you like um, Massive Darkness, you won't like this game. You won't like this game. You won't like this game. All right, let's go to my next. You know what I think of when I think of wandering in a dream that makes absolutely no sense? A highly logical mystery detective solving game, Detective C City of Angels. I'm going to get this right. By Van Ryder Games, designed by the ever- Ever so very stylish. I always say it backwards, Derek. Evan Derek, Sir Evan Derek. Fantastic artwork by Vincent Detroit. This is a work of love. I love this game. I wanted it. I love solving mysteries. So I was like, do I want one of the detective games? Do I want Sherlock Holmes? And Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective was actually up against this. And I picked this as the game I can't live without for my detective mystery games because. This has more game to it. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is wonderful experience, um, but you are really, you know, have your tea and crimpets. I don't know what crimpets are. Have them. Have them. And play Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. And there's no, like, I mean, there is player turns and you all work together, follow leads and things like that, but it really is an experience. Uh, it's a game. It's like a murder mystery night. It's a game. But is it a game? I don't know. Anyway. This is full on a game and it is multiplayer and solo. Did I mention that with either fields? Oh my goodness, either fields you can play cooperatively or you can play solo. I have only played it solo. I have no need to really play it cooperatively, but I guess you could. All right, anyway, Detective City of Angels is a semi-cooperative game where it's asymmetrical. 
where you have one versus several if you're playing multiplayer. One of you plays the chisel. The chisel is like the game master. You know the mystery, you know the solution, and your goal is to basically make the other players have the best experience possible by giving them either more challenge or less challenge because they're going to be asking you for information. You control the information and you have these little cards that you can give them that might be, they're, they're different answers to their questions and it might be a lie, it might be the truth, it might be a half truth, it, the truth might be completely useless and what you can do is the chisel is decide, I know my game group, I know that they want a challenge so you can make it really hard for them to win or you can make them almost win and then not let them win or you can make it so that they win or they can play so well that you're really having a challenge. Basically, you gauge it so that everyone has a good time. But fortunately, you're not responsible for a whole lot of that. Because it's such a well-designed game, the game really controls it for you. So the players get to actually move around on a map, go to a location, and investigate something at that location. Then you, as the chis chisel, get to decide what response you give them. They can force you to give certain answers based on different things that they gain as they play the game and get correct solutions. Each detective is working on their own to be the best detective. So while they are kind of working together to get some information, they're also hiding information so that they can be the best detective. You can play this solo. Every case, I have played every case in every expansion except for the latest standalone, and I'm reserving it I would like to play it live. I know that's a spoiler, but you know what? I want you to see it. Play it solo, solve the case. Once you've solved the case, you can play as the chisel because you don't want to play as the chisel until you've solved the case because the chisel knows the answer to the case and it ruins it for you. So play it solo first. You get a lot of playability out of this. It's $90, I'm sorry. Comes with 10 cases. You can play every one of them solo and then play every one of them multiplayer if you would like. Fantastic experience. Loved it, thrilling. All right, next. You know what I think of when I think of a rambunctious detective game where you're semi-cooperatively working together? I think of Scythe, specifically the expansion Rise of Fenris, which is the expansion. Note you have to buy Scythe and Rise of Fenris in order to play that. Those are the only two you need. Scythe alone is, what, $60, something like that. Rise of Fenris is like $40, $50. Could be wrong, I'm putting them up on the screen. I'm sorry if that was off. So I have everything, that's why it's in this heavy legendary box. Everything else was just a lid, but I don't want to take this apart. Anyway, Scythe, this is a tournament game. If you like chess, this is for you. If you don't like chess, you will not enjoy this game. Player interaction, you're going up against each other. You like war, this is not your game. You do have battles, you might have one or two battles in the game. The purpose of your military vehicle things like the mechs is mainly to transport and to create tension so your opponent is afraid of attack and is building up for it. But you, you still will have one or two battles in the game, but really it's collecting resources in order to build up, develop your whole area and expand. So it's all, I guess you'd call this a 4X game. You know, what is that? Expand, I had to find out, I had to Google it. Expand, exploit, explore, and something else figure it out. I don't know. So you're doing, you're building resources in order to expand and complete certain objectives. You get stars each time you complete a certain special something. First person to get six stars ends the game. That does not mean they win. That means that you then rack up the money. You get money by expanding. Whoever has the most money wins. Rise of Fenris. Let me come over here. Rise of Fenris. Oh, my arm's getting sore. Let's do this. Rise of Fenris turns it into a campaign experience with a full-on story with Tesla and some cool surprises. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Um, people that love the base game sometimes hate Rise of Fenris because it changes the game. Don't play it. Just play the base game. Whatever. Let's go to our last game. Our last game, you know, is going to be the fireworks. The fireworks of all fireworks. Spyfall, are you disappointed? Okay, I'm on the fence with this one. Such a good game, three to eight players. So this is one of the only, one of two that don't have solo modes. Cause I think even solo gamers, a lot of us anyway, enjoy having some family party games around. And I do. Spyfall has been a hit on game night so many times over and over, three to eight players designed by people. 
Cryptozoic Entertainment. If you don't put it on the cover, I don't know who you are. It'll be on the screen. Uh, not expensive. $20, $25, $30. It'll be on the screen. Look for it. So this is a game where you are assigned a role. You're either a spy or you're an agent. Depending how many players there are, if you get Spyfall 2, then you can play with up to like 12 people. Excuse the hiccups, it's time for me to go apparently. All right, age of 13 up. But anyway, you're assigned either a spy or an agent. You're either gonna have one spy or two spies depending on how high the player count is. The spy is trying to figure out where the location that the agents are at is. The spy knows that they're the spy. The agents know the location, but they don't know who the spy is, right? So it's a hidden role game, social deduction, the role of the agents is to find out who the spy is, call them out. The role of the spy is to be able to guess the location before they get caught. How does this happen? Well, each person gets to ask a question of someone else. So I would ask as the spy, maybe I could ask somebody like, is there a lot of noise where you are? Because you want to be careful with your question because if you ask a certain question, you might give away the location to the spy, or you might give away that you're the spy if it's too vague. The person you ask has to answer in any way they want. They can answer in any way they want, as vague as they want, or specific. Too specific, they give information to the spy. Too vague, they make themselves look suspicious. That person then gets to ask another person a question. This continues for eight minutes. It's a timed game. For eight minutes, you go around, you're just not allowed to ask the person who asked you a question, right? So it forces everybody to get some turns. At any point in the game, you can use your turn to call to accuse someone, it goes to a vote. If it's unanimous, they're accused. If it's the spy, you win. If not, you the spy wins. And you get a certain number of points depending how you win. So you can play multiple rounds and say like, you know, best points out of three rounds, something like that. If you want to play more than one, everybody always does. So there's still a point system. Man, it's just a fun game with a nice group. I wouldn't play this with three. I can't imagine. I haven't tried it. Maybe under five. I really think this is like your six and above player count. Like the more, the better. Maybe 12 is too many. I'm not sure. I've played in the six to nine to 10 range and I've loved every experience. That's it, y'all. Thank you so much for staying with me. What on earth are the 10 games that you couldn't live without? Would you pick any one of these or is this rubbish? I don't know. Please let me know in the comments. And also, also, if you want to keep seeing content from me, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you don't want to keep seeing content from me, please do not like and subscribe because that confuses me. That's very confusing. All right. I'll see you next time. I love you all.